them with the incarnation of Jesus. Obviously, we've done the why it's important. So let's think about that impact on um, a Christian's life today. Um, I'm going to go through this one first and then just tell me if you've got anything else that you would have added into this. Because obviously this is a working document so we can add things as we go. And you may have thought of something that I haven't, which would be fantastic. Um, so what I've got is this. Jesus appears um, closer to them. So Jesus, um, obviously, being in human form feels like they're more closely connected to Jesus. He suffered pain, starvation um, and grief in the same way that they have. Therefore, um, he they feel like he truly understands them. Um, Christians feel a strong connection to Jesus and pray with him um, for their salvation and forgiveness. So that's an active thing that they still do today. It impacts their life because they pray to Jesus, not directly just to God, but to Jesus because he is God. Um, they have faith in the Trinity um, and they see Jesus as God. So um, his incarnation is that, that person of the Trinity, which makes Jesus a uh, God three in one. Um, they worship Jesus and um, as both fully man and fully God. So again, they sort of channel that through Jesus. Um, any questions about anything that's on there? Anyone get anything else that they want to contribute to it? This is really similar, I think, to what you have. I just said it helps them believe in God's love for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the fact that he was willing to come down to earth and, um, you know, take on that human form so he could teach us, you know, literally face to face. Yeah, lovely. I suppose in terms of that, you know, that does fit under the importance, but you if you want to think about it, like the impact, you want to think what impact that has on them today. So because God showed that love for them, the impact of that is that they uh, pray to him, they rely on him, they have faith in him, they, you know, sacrifice time, energy, effort for him because he showed that love to them, they want to show that back to him. So again, when you see this impact, it's more about like action, like how do they put this faith into action in their lives? How does it you know, rather than me walking around as an atheist, me walking around as a Christian, what does the belief in the incarnation have on effect on my life? That's really what we're looking for in this column. Um, so birth, now again, in the left-hand side um, on this column, you might have put more specific things about the birth. Um, when we're thinking about importance, um, obviously we can pick out Mary's role in Jesus' birth is important as it showed um, it was a miracle due to her being a virgin. So his birth itself is miraculous. Um, he was born as a king, but into a, hum uh, a humble stable, showing uh, poverty and humility. Um, he is visited by the wise men and given gifts to symbolise his godliness or his holiness um, in the frankincense, because that's what they would uh, use in the Jewish temple uh, as like the symbol of uh, the spirit of God. Uh, the gold represented his royalty or his kingliness, his... Um, the fact that he was descended from the line of kings, um, that he was going to die or he was going to be that Messiah. And that was the myrrh, the sort of burial spices um, as that symbol of death, which is a strange, oh, excuse me, oh, strange gift to give a baby. But it just showed that um, even from that the moment of his birth, the prophecy was that he would be the one that would um, be the salvation of mankind. Impact then again, this kind of like how that lives out in the lives of Christians today. You've got and um, you know nativity plays that are put on that recreate his birth to teach that story to children, um, but also to celebrate that sort of good news that Jesus was born. Uh, for Catholics, uh, Mary is viewed as a saint and is venerated because of this um, her role in Jesus's birth. Um, not so much for other denominations of Christianity, this sort of sainting or sainthood which Catholics give. So they will sometimes pray sort of always through the Virgin Mary to God, which other denominations don't necessarily like, because it should, for them, it should be directly to God. But they do use Mary as sort of inspiration for prayer. Um, and then you've got Christians practice humility, um, as Jesus did for their role models. All right, I've got a couple of points here. Let's have a little look. 
Um, most could you also say for Christians, it reveals the grace of God. It reveals the loving nature of Christ. And since Jesus would leave his leave his life in heaven for our sake, it was a form of human to preach and practice all of God's messages and spread the religion. Yeah, absolutely. What I would say is focus on that first bit in terms of the fact that he was willing to come down to earth, take on that human form, um, you know, that sort of show of omnibenevolence, if you like, um, or even omnipotence, the fact that he had the power to do that. Yeah, it's a show of those. His birth and his incarnation are very similar. Um, and when you're talking about one, you could talk about the other. And the difference really is, is that his incarnation is about his spiritual incarnation, about the fact that he's God who became human. His birth is more about the story and sort of what was involved in that. So the people, the mechanics of it, if you like, um, in terms of happened in Bethlehem. And, you know, you could also put in this column here, actually, impact that, P that uh, Christians will go on pilgrimage to Bethlehem um, and, you know, try and walk in those footsteps and experience what it would have been like to be there. So there's lots of different things you could put in there. So we're just trying to get to the main points at the moment. Um, baptism then. Um, so Jesus himself, again, in this, this column, you could have put something about, uh, even more detail about John the Baptist, his cousin, baptizing him in the River Jordan. Um, the voice comes from heaven saying, this is my beloved son. That's the quote from the Bible that God sort of claims Jesus. Um, oh, Sorry, you know, claims Jesus as his son at this moment and this is when he starts his ministry so it's like it's a symbol of Jesus leaving behind his old life and sort of living this godly life now if you like on earth where he is you know doing God's work so he's left behind being a carpenter and is moving forward with his ministry so in terms of baptism it, he then it's important because this is then a role model for Christians um, so when they want to become Christians or disciples of God, they will become baptized either as babies or as adults. Um, Jesus, when he's about to ascend, gives a command of baptism. So he says, go and make disciples of nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, you know, it's part of that great commission just before Jesus dies. Um, he tells people to get baptized as this symbol of following God, much like he himself does when he's on earth. Um, obviously, it's a symbol that God's going to remove original sin as well. Um, wash away those sins gives you that sort of uh, start um, to live that um, spiritual life. It is important to reach heaven and things that you obviously have those sins washed away as well. So, because uh, very significant. Oh, what's wrong with me? I'll stop the warning. Anything else in there that you feel like we should put in for baptism? Anyone get anything else? Could you say that it shows the importance of um, believers' baptism? For the fact that they, Jesus himself was an adult, do you mean? Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Yes, exactly. I mean, I for me, I've put that into the right-hand column um, just because uh, in terms of it being that impact on their lives today. So it's it impacts their choice, if you like. So you could put it in that first column. For me, I've put it in the second one. So I've put baptism is a sacrament so it's one of those sacred actions that um spiritual actions that christians take uh christians too will now be baptized either as adults in the same way as jesus or parents will baptize their babies to remove original sin um so yeah you can put it in either column but for me i just put it as an impact um sounds but welcomes christians to the community and celebrates with family and friends and churches reinforces the importance of baptism as an important sacrament for catholics and protestant yeah good um i think that bit about welcoming christians into that into the church as well um would be a really good one for the right hand column actually in terms of impact on christians today it welcomes them into the church so when the person has been baptized you know there's a big celebration you know lots of cake um to sort of be like yay they've become part of god's family and can have their godparents as their babies or you know they have like a sort of um, like, almost like a sponsor if you like as you're an adult someone who'll be with you to sort of help guide you if you like very good um right teachings now i could have written loads for this so i try to keep it kind of simple um because obviously he for two years he goes through and most of the new testament is actually 
Jesus talking to people about how to be good and how to be loving and sort of oh my goodness oh I'm like a yawning machine today and uh, teach them how to be good teach them how to um help people and show that love and show that compassion how to get to the kingdom of heaven how to get to god how to reunite and reconcile that relationship and sort of participate in salvation um i try to keep it simple obviously i've got love your neighbor as you love yourself so parable of the good samaritan uh, which uh, one of you mentioned earlier which is good um all those parables you mentioned so i put a role model um of moral behavior and instructions on how to be moral. So he lived it in his life and he instructed others on how to do it. Uh, behavior that will see you forgiven and entry into heaven, kingdom of heaven. Um, parables, so those teachings were important because they enabled all people to understand, even those who did not read or write, um, how to access salvation. Um, so again, those teachings is two things really. How do the teachings affect it? Because they laid out that guidance of what they should do but it also they look to jesus as like you know if they don't know what to do in a particular situation christians will ask themselves well, what would jesus do in this situation and so they can sort of because he was human at the time he has this like um you know the epitome of what we should be striving to be so in terms of that impact of in christians lives now Christians read the Bible and study these teachings to see how they can be applied in their own lives. So Christians will meet in like study groups and things. They might take a parable like we've done in our collective worships um, and think of, and sort of dissect it and think, OK, well, how does this teach me something about my life and how is it useful? You know, I'm in this dilemma at work with this colleague. What do I do? This person at school is doing this thing. Yeah, how should I best respond to it? What would Jesus do in this situation? Uh, Christian schools and churches have collective worship to remember the wisdom and guidance, pass it on, teach children. There is wisdom and guidance in there, even if you know you're not Christian. There's you know some good morality in there of how to live a good life. Um, Christians practice this in their lives. They perform good works, which helps them to salvation. Um, and again, when you're studying and revising your what salvation and atonement are, uh, remember you know your ways to salvation are through God's grace but also for Catholics in particular and other denominations, they believe that you must do good works as well. So give to charity, clothe the hungry, much like it says in that parable, the sheep and goats for uh, Christians. So I'm rushing through this a little bit, but I want to get onto the questions. I'm very, very um, aware of the time. Uh, so if you do have anything else, obviously already questions, do pop them in the chat and I'll come back to it. Um, crucifixion then again you could have put it down here added in about Judas put in about the last supper the arrest in the garden of Gethsemane any of those sorts of things that are linked to the story um, here we've got uh, Jesus sacrifice on the cross to remove the sin for the world I love his salvation for all who believe in him they kind of covered that with the quote earlier weirdly I didn't put the quote in here so feel free to put the John 3.16 quote in the left hand column here as well um, it gives hope to Christians that they, if they repent, they too will be saved. Um, it showed God's love for the world and his willingness to suffer pain and humiliation for mankind's redemption. And Christians understand that suffering is a part of life. And, um, you know, Jesus comes and he suffers. And so Christians also reconcile that that might be part of their life as well. In terms of his impact today, obviously it's impacted their practices because they'll have the Holy Communion which is again one of the sacraments, one of those special um, sacred uh, rites of passage that they have. Um, they'll repeat the words of the Last Supper, so the body and the blood being the wine and the bread, remembering this sacrifice and this crucifixion. Um, they are grateful and cheered by, you know, it's called Good Friday, the day that Jesus dies, um, because they now have access to heaven and because Jesus is atoned for their sins. Again, it removes that fear of death for the of death for them because they believe that uh, if they believe in Jesus uh, you know and even if they suffer there will be um, good things that happen afterwards uh, resurrection we've got uh, his resurrection was a miracle so this is why it's important fulfilled the prophecies and scriptures um, it was a show of God's omnipotence of his power to resurrect it allows Jesus to continue his ministry and his teachings, uh, shows the power of good over evil. 
uh, removes fear of death, as we just said, because it's a promise of the resurrection for all. Um, shows that life after death is real. And then obviously that column's already there and we talked through that a bit earlier. So lastly, we've got the ascension. So again, these 40 days after, then he raises up on the cloud or is covered by the cloud and he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. So why is this important? Okay, Jesus has um, completed his works on earth and he gives his last commands here called the Great Commission, where he says, go baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, um, making disciples of nations and following all the commands that he's given, all his teachings and things. Uh, Jesus doesn't die, but he's raised into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father with God. Um, and that shows that Jesus is still alive today. So Jesus is with God in heaven. He's not still roaming around on earth. Um, he's not dead. He has ascended and he's in heaven with, you know, seated at the right hand of God now. Uh, people witness Jesus' ascension again. So that was a affirmation of faith in him for many people to see him ascend in this way and return to heaven if you like or be up there also paves the way for pentecost which is when the holy spirit comes down to earth um which is there now the part of god that's here now to comfort and guide uh, christians today well everyone today not just christians but those who believe um Impact then is Christians still pray to Jesus uh, as a living God who they believe um, can take real action in their lives through miracles and answering prayers. So there's no point praying to Jesus if he can't actually affect anything. So, you know, the impact really is, is that they believe that when they pray to Jesus, he is actually he has the power to help and to change things um, where that's right in his you know, his plan or uh, you know, that he's the path that he's divined for us. Um, they make disciples through evangelism and missionary work. Uh, they baptize people. Again, these are from specifically from the Great Commission, these commands that he gives before he goes to heaven. Um, they follow Jesus' teachings as instructed, again, as given in the Great Commission. Uh, and they have faith that they too will one day uh, ascend into heaven after judgment. So there's that sort of promise of this eternal life in heaven. So this is a pretty meaty document, guys, but actually it is more than that because what you have here is access to basically any two, four, five, and 12 mark question that they could really ask you on this. Um, I'm just gonna share this PowerPoint again so that you get uh, sort of uh, the way that this is there. Oh yeah, transubstantiation from earlier as well. Thank you, Sam, in terms of the um, bread and wine for Catholics actually becoming the body and blood of Jesus. Um, so the way this works, and of course you've got this now, so you can um, have a go at this, but if you want to just cr even create yourself some sort of GCC style questions, um, this is really what you do. So you've got these three columns, um, and the first column is basically like where you might source your two markers from. So it might say something like give two events or two things that happened at the incarnation or give two reasons the incarnation is important or give two, you know, so there's give questions that will be taken from these two columns. So if you were in uh, the teachings, it might be give two parables of Jesus, give two miracles of Jesus, give two, you know, anything that was sort of put into this column. Um, your two, four, five markers are really in this column. So um, I'll go through these in a second, but, uh, so this column is your sort of two mark questions, for example, give two beliefs about the incarnation and then you would put that um, he was made flesh that, and actually you could even take from the birth thing here. So he um, was born to the Virgin Mary, anything like that could go from this column. Um, from this column, you've got uh, a sort of four or five mark question. So you've got the answers here. So now I want you to sort of retrofit a question to it basically. So four or five mark question here might be something like explain two reasons why the insert this word incarnation is important to Christians. So you've got the importance here. So as you go down this, you just change this word out. So explain two reasons why the crucifixion is important to Christians. Explain two, re two reasons why the um, ascension is important to Christians. And then you've literally got your answers here. So you've got three bullet points and you would just pick two of those and put in one of these quotes from the column before. 
and then you have your ready-made four or five marker answer. Um, it's more likely this is going to be your four marker and then the next column will be your five marker because they like to ask you sort of impact questions um, for your five mark question and so you can bring in a Bible quote for it. So again, for this it would be explain to you ways the incarnation impacts Christians today. So it impacts them by, and again, you've got four here, pick two of them. Yeah. And so one way that it impacts them is by, so turning in here, uh, Jesus appears closer to them because he has suffered the pain and grief. Therefore, um, they believe that they, they truly understand is because he came there, he made his dwelling amongst them. There you go, put in the quote as well. Um, in terms of like a 12 marker, um, you might get something like the incarnation of Jesus is not relevant to Christians today. And obviously you've got your entire disagree argument in this column. Of course, it's still important to Christians today because, and this is the reasons why. And then you could just think about it compared to one of the other um, units. It's not um, as important today as, say, his crucifixion, or it's not as important today because, I don't know, you can think about your other answers. So, Although this gives you a lot of information, it also helps you write questions for yourself. OK, so in the chat, have a little go. So I've given you the next bit here. Now, when you ask a question about resurrection, it's really tricky because actually this could mean two things. It could either be talking about the resurrection of Jesus or the beliefs about the resurrection for humans. So that humans will be resurrected in the future. And actually, either of those answers would be completely valid. So, if, for example, it said explain to uh, teachings about the resurrection, you could put that Jesus was resurrected from the dead on the third day, blah, blah, or you could say, or and you could say, Christians believe that they too will be resurrected in the future um, as they get. So Lewin's got 12 marker for us. Resurrection is the most important miracle to Christians. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. And then again, you've got this, these, all these reasons here why it was super important to them. But then you would compare that to another miracle that he did. For example, the fact that he um, walked on water or healed people or, you know, if you're praying for healing, you're less worried about the resurrection, more worried about that sort of healing. But the fact that he's alive today, really good. Can anyone think of a four or five marker that you could ask for this section or a two marker? in the chat so remember your two mark is going to start with give two um and then your four mark is going to explain with explain two so someone's got explain two ways that the resurrection impacts a christian's life today perfect ryan's got explain two ways in which the resurrection is important in the life of jesus very good um and then we've got uh, what is the importance of Jesus' resurrection for Christians today? Four or five marker, good, because you could put a quote in or not, or you put a quote in both of them and you just get a different set of marks. Excellent. So is that helpful? Can you sort of see how you've almost got the answers there and then you can sort of structure the questions around it? I mean, you can do this for all the different units. You could take this out, keep the, keep the same structure, but take out resurrection and put in um, the Eucharist, baptism, Christmas, Easter, um, and have this sort of a structure for your practices unit as well, or keep going and put in Judgment Day, um, Life After Death, and sort of extend these columns. So you think, why are they so significant? And how does it impact their lives today? And it's just a really nice way of making sure you hit those, those points of understanding importance, but also pulling in those quotes, and being able to um, understand the impact on their lives today. So you can continue with the, you put Trinity in there, you could put um, suffering, evil and suffering in there. Um, I'm just trying to think of other things. The world, the, you could put uh, in the practices section for like uh, the worldwide growth of the church. And, you know, and then you talk about why is it important because of evangelism and the Great Commission. How does it affect their lives? Because they become missionaries and they you know, give up their time and energy and go and work abroad and do things. So it's just a nice way of sort of structuring it getting you know filtering that information through but also then being able to write your own questions and seeing if you can actually do it because remember the um examiners we as your teachers we are working off from the same information 
and actually um, this is how we write your questions as well by looking at things like this and the expectations. So hopefully you've got that document now, hopefully it's going to be really useful to you for this part of your revision. Um, it is 20 past so I will let you go. Um, but thank you very much for your contributions that those questions that you wrote at the end were really good. So it looks like you've understood this very well. So well done, guys. And um, if you've got any other questions or anything you need from me, just hang around for a few minutes. Otherwise, you can go.